Hello, everybody. Welcome to Geek Impulse. I'm your host, Joshua Sexton, as usual, and I am here with the amazingly talented Panu. Correct? Did I say that again? I, I know I asked ahead of time, but again, you know, such a unique name. I didn't want to slaughter it. That is correct, and uh, thanks for having me. Awesome. So you do stunts as well as acting. You've been in the industry for well over a decade. Uh, I would say it, the precise amount, but uh, it would probably make you older than what you actually look. Right? You look very young and healthy. So uh, I, I don't want, I don't want to go too far into that. But also, I want to get out of the way because it's not about me. It's more about you. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Um, say what you want as far as, you know, how long you've been in the industry, these types of things, and uh, what you've been up to. Uh, again, uh, Panu, uh, I've been in the industry for a long time. Um, I'm an actor, I'm a producer, and I'm a stuntman. And uh, all things that I enjoy very much. And, uh, you know, I look forward to keep doing for as long as I can. So you, a lot of people don't know. So you, you, you do acting, like you said, and you've done stunts for different kinds of films. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I wanted to first ask about was the stuff you did in Wolverine back in, I believe it was 2009. Uh, do you mind elaborating how it was like working on that film? What were some of the things you did? And maybe something that we didn't know about the film or maybe hasn't really talked about that you can, uh, you know, you can reveal to us. <laughs> um, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's, it is dangerous, don't get me wrong, but we have such great stunt people and stunt coordinators and and riggers that it makes everything as safe as humanly possible and when i did wolverine that was just a blast i mean to be part of that universe first of all is amazing and then to work with people like hugh jackman and and so forth you know i'm i'm I've been doing this for a long time, but every once in a while, even I get little stars in my eyes. <laughs> and it's like, I, I can't believe I'm working with Hugh Jackman, <laughs> you know, and you get all excited, but you got to play it cool. You know, you can't let that bubble out. And uh, we just got to do some amazing stuff like that, you know, that first big scene in the movie when, you know, they go to, to that compound, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just really cool. Yeah, that's, you know, you, you touched on it a little bit, and I think, you know, not everybody asks about it or wants to talk about it, but it's a real thing, and that is, you know, potential injuries, you know, the safety of it all, being a stunt person, even when you're doing doing acting, um, even if you're not doing stunts, you know, there's, you can trip over cords, I mean, I know it sounds a little silly, but there's a lot of stuff that goes on, you know, uh, there's tape on the ground for a reason, it might be covering up a cord, it might be, you know, where you want to stand in these types of things, you know, have you ever been injured, were there close calls, you know, what have you found is paramount in your profession to really keep you safe, but still be able to do those stunts? You know what, it's, it's the people and the rules that are put in place. I mean, the stunt community is, is small and they look after one another. I mean, the amount of prep before we do even a simple stunt is amazing so that everybody knows what's gonna be happening. Everybody knows the order it's gonna be happening. We practice, we practice, we practice and we get it right 99.9% .9 of the time because of the safeguards, because of the practicing, because the um, coordinators are on their game and they have to be. I mean, the stuff that I've done in Canada, amazing people. The stuff that I've done in the US, amazing people. And they're there for a reason. Is there, is there anything different? It's all the entertainment industry, but I imagine when you're doing stuff in another country, another city, things like that, right? There are probably these subtle differences or nuances, you know, maybe because uh, some regulations aren't or, or necessary regulations, but rules 
on set may be a little bit different because you might be able to get away with something that you couldn't somewhere else, right? So what has been, you found has been the difference working in Canada, Hollywood, what have you, what has been some differences that make it unique to that area? I think the the only real real main differences are maybe what people call certain things and how to do it. In terms of stunts, it's the same throughout the industry. Whether you're working in Canada, whether you're working in the US, whether you're working in Europe, you follow the same rules and guidelines. So you're never unsure of what's happening and what will be happening. I mean, people may call it something different (laughs) depending on where you go, but you know what's going on. And again, you do so much preliminary work before you do anything that you know exactly what's going on 100% of the time. I mean, and I know people have seen some of the um, behind the scenes work of, of, you know, some of the big budget films and all that work is there on purpose because it may be a $300,000 shot that you'll want to get right the first time. And so again, it's just like practice, 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 and then you go. Got it. Yeah, it makes sense. And with that being said, you know, I still want to talk about what you're doing now, but I I want to sort of diverge a little bit and go back to, you know, what it is that you, two questions, what was it that you did before you started getting into acting and stunts and all that? And then the second question is, what inspired you to do this? Let's go with the inspired question first. Um, When I was young, I used to need to get away, you know, because growing up is just hard in general, you know, trying to fit in and be part of a group and all of that type of stuff. And whenever I found it hard for me, I would sit down and I'd watch a movie. I'd sit down and I'd watch a TV show and be taken away in that hour or two hours of pure enjoyment. And I thought, this is really cool. I would love to be able to do this for somebody else, somebody else that has a hard day. They want to sit down and they want to watch their favorite show. And it just makes things so much easier and better and feeling like, okay, all right, I can, you know, brush this off and you know, I can get back to what I need to do the next day, but for this hour, I'm just going to sit back and relax. And I just wanted to do that for other people. And that's actually how I got into acting. You know, I started in, in high school and then, you know, I did it in university and then, you know, I did it for real. And it was just such a great feeling. And I still feel that now there's nothing I like more than when people tell me, you know what, I loved you in such and such. You know, I watched it with my family and it was just great. You know, that feeling for me is why I do what I do. Nice. I I, I like that. So I I guess that kind of answers the other question too, right? What you did before, so you did university, things like that. I think it's pretty awesome. A lot of people, you know, still uh, do acting from their youth. I know me, for example, I did it in high school. Then I joined the military and then I did it when I got out, um, mostly because I was very much like a robot and I, I, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to talk with you right now like I am. Right. So I the reason why I bring that up is because I think people don't realize just how much the arts such as theater and things like that really help you to mold who you really are. Right. And it also allows you that freedom of expression to really convey what you want to convey to the world, right? What has been probably the most profound aspect of what you're doing that you were like, wow, this is who I am. This is my message to the world, these types of things. Um, when I was working in Toronto, I worked on a, a show for um, YTV and Nickelodeon called I was a sixth grade alien. And in that show, I basically played a bodyguard of, a, of, of an alien that came to earth and they put him in sixth grade. And I was his bodyguard while he went through all of his sort of hijinks and stuff. 
And I remember being on the streetcar in Toronto. I think I was going for groceries or something. And two little kids just jumped out of their seats and they must have been six years old or seven years old. And they were like, oh my gosh, it's McNally, it's McNally. Mom, mom, it's McNally, can we go up and say hi? And I'm telling you, my heart just broke because these kids saw something that just changed their world. And that was me, you know, I got to be a part of that happy change for them. And it's like, yeah, yeah, this is good. I like this. That's a, that's a beautiful story. You know, a lot of people don't realize, you know, just how much pop culture, entertainment, these types of things really affect the lives of people uh, in our day to day, you know, and I think that's a beautiful thing for you to be out and about, you know, unassumingly just doing your thing. And the next thing you know, you get noticed, right? I think that's a, a, a pretty cool thing, you know. What has been, you know, maybe the, the hardest part about um, stunt work? And I know, you, again, you do acting and stuff, and, and that's great. But I think the stunt work, too, is something that doesn't really get um, a lot of recognition because it really is instrumental in the way everything flows in a film, you know? What has been that for you? My love of stunt work um, actually goes back to the fact that when I started acting, there were no black stuntmen. So there were certain things that unless I learned how to do it, um, it wouldn't get done. You know, they couldn't bring somebody in, you know, that wasn't necessarily black to do the stunts. And so that's where I started with stunts. And then once I started doing them, I realized I enjoyed them more and more and more and more. And as I'm doing them today, it's just an amazing thing because they're so crucial in a lot of things that we see. And I mean, even if you're doing a drama, you know, the, the main thing that's important is your main actors, you want them to keep doing what they're doing. And so that's why you bring in stunt performers so that we can keep the show going and the main actor doesn't, you know, hurt himself, you know, hurt a leg, hurt an arm, hurt a, and then the production has to stop. So the fact that we can seamlessly come in and do those little things that make the whole movie work is pretty cool. And it, I know that stunt people don't get a lot of recognition for the work that they do. And the funny part is, is they're not supposed to get a lot of recognition for what they do. Because if you start noticing the stunt performer, then something's wrong a little bit or just wasn't quite right with the edit or this or that or that type of thing. We enjoy the fact that we get in, we do our job and we make everything look seamless. And that's, that's, that's a great thing for us when you just can't tell. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I definitely get that, right? Cause you're, you're, you're kind of like a ninja in a way right you're there to perform the the action that needs to be performed and then get out of there right and do it to your best of your ability so it looks as natural and like the individuals you're doing it for as possible as humanly possible so i get that what is first thing what is or who has been the person that you have admired that you've done stunts for the most or and also who would you like to do stunts for that you haven't done stunts for yet oh wow that's a that's a that's a tough question um because just working with different stunt coordinators in general is really cool because every coordinator has their own sort of look and feel to um, the picture or the TV show. 
and learning from them is just amazing. And, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of great sort of, you know, stunt coordinators and, and people in, in, in that industry that would be great to work with or work for, but it's not necessarily something that you get to choose. And so I, I guess in a, in a roundabout way, I just like to work. I just like to work with whoever, whenever, and just sort of soak in what they're offering. And so for me, whether it's a big budget or a small budget, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's the learning. I mean, it's, it's one of those things that if you're not learning, then there's something wrong. And the fact that I get to learn from different people all the time is pretty cool. I get that. What can you tell me about Peacemaker, obviously without giving away things that you, you can't really say, but talk about your experience on there working as a stunt person. Um, what are some behind the scenes things that you may be able to say? And if you need to take a little bit of time to think about it first, go ahead. Cause I don't want you to get in trouble, you know, for saying things before it, it airs and all that stuff. But what can you tell me about working on there and some behind the scenes things? Well, for those of you that have seen the trailers, it's big. It's no holds barred. It's things done right. Um, if you know the universe, then you know that what's coming will be like nothing else you've ever seen. We had so much fun. Um, again, it's a small community and we got to work with a lot of that community to do this film. So get ready to just enjoy. All right, it's a, it's a pretty good answer, very general, but I, I, I kind of expected that, right? So I do appreciate it. Uh, I think a lot of our viewers and readers um, are very excited about it. You know, there's always these mixed reactions because, you know, so many people um, identify with that particular character or characters and they just want to see it as accurate as possible right whatever that really means um you know some things can't necessarily translate from comic book to uh the big screen or small screen you know it's kind of hard to say if if hbo max is like what big screen or small screen these days or or disney plus these types of things you know because so many things are pretty big budgeted um yeah. You know, even though it's a, a TV series uh, or a streaming series. So that's pretty awesome. What would you, what would you say to, you, you kind of touched on it a little bit and we like to try to stay out of identity politics, if you will, and, and these types of things, but you kind of touched on it and I wanted to go back to it a little bit. What do you have to say to um, persons of color that would like to get into acting or get into stunt work, you know, what advice do you have for them? What are some things that you can say that you think would help to inspire them to chase their dream? Because I feel like, you know, a lot of times um, people don't really see how they can get into the industry and do those things that they're really actually excited about. And they might be a little bit turned away from that. Um, not necessarily like people are turning them away, but they just have this self-concept that they can't really do it? I would say this to everybody, regardless of, of who you are. When you're coming into this industry, the movie industry or TV industry, or this, this part of the entertainment industry, you've got to really want it. This cannot be something that you think on a whim that you would like to do you can't think, oh, I'd like to be famous. You know, I can do this easily. I can get into it. This is work. This is a lot of work. Like anything else, to be good at something, you've got to work at it. You've got to practice. You've got to do as much as you can. But if it's this that you want to do, do it, but put in the work. And as long as you put in the work and you do the work well, then you've got to also wait for the opportunity. 
because there's a lot of people in this industry that are amazing at what they do. They just get unlucky that the break never comes. People talk about, you know, getting your big break and so forth. Your big break won't mean anything if you're not prepared if you haven't put in the work, if you haven't studied, if you haven't gone over everything you can for when your break happens and then you're ready to go. So definitely follow your dreams, but understand that dreams in this industry, they actually come with a lot of work. God, I think that's a, a, a great uh, explanation to um, those individuals who actually want to get into the industry and i definitely can concur that and again sorry to talk about myself a little bit but i was on um weed season three episode three i was the only prior service military aside from the stunt coordinator who was a, a major in the marine corps and he asked for anybody because they were doing stunts i'd never got credit for doing the stunts on that show but it's when the the main character, her brother, goes to boot camp for the army and he had them do the stunts. Right. And I had wanted to break into the industry and I was doing background work. And the reason why I'm saying this is because you never know when that opportunity might come. I was making minimum wage as background. I go and he tells the, the director, OK, have them do the, the obstacle course. Then he goes, Marine, do the obstacle course. I did the obstacle course. They're like wow okay he's doing the stunts but the uh the brother and sister got um credit for it because they did do some things i didn't get it but i got the pay so the pay <laughs> went from minimum wage to several thousands of dollars for literally like 15 minutes of work so i say that because again piggybacking off what you say you know it really takes hard work but that hard work pays off in ways you may not know you know yeah. You never know when that opportunity may come. You may go into background, then do stunts or get asked to do, do lines. But there's also those moments where you might do something and then it gets edited out or something like that. And in those cases, what do you have to say to individuals that, you know, hey, they got a line in a, in a, in a, in a film and then it gets edited out. So what do you say to those individuals to keep them going to have them persevere in a situation like that that's a tough one because that works on who you are and i can't count the amount of times i've been left on the cutting room floor you know where you've done some amazing stuff but the story can't fit it in you know they had to go a different way with how they wanted the look of the movie to be and when that stuff happens, you just have to take it on the chin and realize that that's just part of the industry. It will happen more often than not. Um, again, until you actually see the finished product, nothing is promised, absolutely nothing. And you just gotta keep going. You know, If this is what you want, then understand that it's gonna happen, whether you want to happen or not, and you've got to just keep going. Awesome. Yeah, I like that. Definitely, definitely truth there. And I, I, again, I want to be weary of your time. So I want to go ahead and sort of, you know, make things die down a little bit here. But I want to ask a question that I ask everybody. And sometimes it stumps people. And if you've seen any of my videos, you know, you'll know what I'm talking about. And that is, what is a question in which you wish you have been asked out of all the interviews you've done over the years that no one has ever asked you, but you wished was asked? The question that nobody has ever asked me that I wished was asked would be, probably if I could be any Star Trek character in the world, who would it be? Okay, so who would it be? <laughs> <laughs> Are you asking me this question? Yes, yes, yes. That's the that's the follow up. I am a a longtime Star Trek fan from day one, and my favorite character 
And the person I would love to be in the Star Trek universe is Q. Elaborate on that for just a little bit. Q has such a wide range of things and people and characters he can be. And for an actor, oh, that is the candy store. Got it. Okay. Awesome. Well, I appreciate that. And before we go, go ahead and tell everybody where they can find you, what's where they should look for you at next. And uh, yeah. Uh, basically, you know, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter and, you know, all those great things. Um, I've got some good stuff coming out next year. So just, you know, just, just keep an eye out. There's some fun stuff happening. Awesome. Okay. Well, we'll have to definitely, you know, obviously we'll keep in touch and, you know, we'll probably have to have you come back again some other time to, to chat some more. So again, I, I appreciate you, Panu, Panu, right? You got it. For, for coming on here and, um, you know, talking with me on Twitter. That's how we, we got this thing going. And I really appreciate you and everything that you're doing. And I wish you the best of everything and continued massive success. And yeah, so thank you for being here today. Well, thanks for having me on. Much appreciated.